Have you ever been talking with someone about abortion and they say that no one is pro-abortion? You probably have because it's actually very common. It's a common way that those who are pro-choice try to justify their position on abortion. You'll hear it sometimes on social media or just the media in general or even politicians. For example, then-Senator Barack Obama in 2008 said no one is pro-abortion during a presidential debate. But just because they say that doesn't make it true. As a matter of fact, it's not true. I'm going to debunk the myth that no one is pro-abortion. And I'm going to do it by showing you plenty examples of people who are, in fact, pro-abortion. Now, going back to Barack Obama, in addition to claiming that no one is pro-abortion, he said this. I've got two daughters. I'm going to teach them, first of all, about values and morals. But if they make a mistake, I don't want them punished with a baby. Now, while this is not the clearest example we're going to see of someone being pro-abortion, it certainly does fit the pro-abortion culture, viewing a baby as a punishment rather than a consequence of sex. Those are two very different things. Continuing with politicians, to look at a more clear example of someone who is pro-abortion, let's look at Andrew Cuomo, who is the current governor of New York State. When New York decided to ease up on the already very lenient late-term abortion restrictions in their state, he decided to light the World Trade Center pink to celebrate the abortion bill. And no, this is not me putting words into his mouth. He literally said that. Quote, I am directing that New York's landmarks be lit pink to celebrate this achievement and shine a bright light forward for the rest of the nation to follow. I would argue that this is a clear example of someone who is pro-abortion and not just pro-choice. He literally said he is celebrating this achievement, which makes it so women can get late-term abortions quite a bit easier. And Cuomo is not just some random politician. There are many who argue that he should be running for president right now, and that's because they agree with the way he's handling the current crisis. Now, I obviously don't, but at the same time, I see where they're coming from because their other option looks like he's kind of losing it. So my point here is that Cuomo is a mainstream politician who is revered by many, and yet he is pro-abortion. Furthermore, we have Ralph Northam, who is the governor of Virginia. And these statements he made recently make it seem like he's fairly pro-abortion as well. The infant would be delivered. Uh, the infant would be kept comfortable. Uh, the infant would be resuscitated if, if that's what the uh, mother and the family desired. And then a discussion would ensue between the physicians and the mother. Now, he claims that he was taken out of context in these statements. But even in context, no matter how you look at it, they are not very good statements to make. As a bit of an aside, I'm not sure why he's still in public office. Shortly after that came forward, there was another controversy brought up where he either dressed up wearing blackface or as a member of a KKK back in a Halloween party in college. Either of those is not very good, but his defense was he doesn't remember which one he was. So he probably shouldn't be in office anymore, but that's just my two cents. Moving away from politicians, now let's look at an organization that presumably has significantly more reach than they do, and that is the United Nations. I argue that they are in fact a pro-abortion organization. And my proof? They claim or affirm that abortion is a human right. If you are claiming that anything is a human right, you are going to be pro that thing. If you think healthcare is a human right or living wage or anything like that, of course you'd be pro healthcare or pro living wage. So the United Nations is pro abortion because they claim it's a human right. Now we're going to look at some celebrities. But before that, if you've appreciated this information so far and you want to continue getting videos like this, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell. I always provide all of my sources down below in the description, so if you're interested in anything, go ahead and check them out. Also, I would really like it if the comment section below was a list of examples of people who are pro-abortion. Now, before you comment any examples you may know of, make sure you finish the video, but if I don't mention the example that you're thinking of and it's someone who is reasonably famous, be sure to put that down in the comment section below. I want this to essentially be an encyclopedia of all of the people who are very evidently pro-abortion. That way you can always come back here and have plenty of examples. Now, let's look at Hollywood. So tonight, in honor of America, I'd like to do a salute to abortion in the break's 10th annual Salute to Abortion. <laughs> Women, if you need an abortion, get one! If you want an abortion, get one! If you're not pregnant but you think you eventually might be and want to order a future abortion, get one! It's up to you, and it doesn't have to be a big deal. It's actually a great deal. It's about $300. God bless abortions and God bless America! I 
I'm hoping I don't have to go into any more detail on that clip. We're just gonna leave it like that and say that's not a good look. Now let's go to Lena Dunham. In an interview a few years ago, she said that she had never had an abortion, but that quote, I wish I had. And the reasoning for this is because I guess she wants to be able to relate to women who have had abortions, but that's a pretty horrible thing to say. We also have Deborah Messing, who I didn't know really who she was, but she's the co-star on Will and Grace, and you probably recognize her face. She decided to have this custom-made 1973 necklace to, in her words, commemorate the 45th anniversary of the historic Roe v. Wade Supreme Court decision. So here we have someone commemorating Roe v. Wade, which in my view is very similar to Andrew Cuomo celebrating the abortion bill. I would like to point out as well that since Roe v. Wade, there have been more than 60 million abortions. And she is commemorating the more than 60 million human lives which have been lost because of that decision. That seems like a great idea. I would also argue that anyone claiming abortion is healthcare is pro-abortion. No one would view themselves as not being pro-healthcare, and if abortion is healthcare, you're pro-abortion. For example, here we have Miley Cyrus. And I know many of you probably saw this really weird collaboration she did with Planned Parenthood where she tried to claim that abortion is healthcare. First off, it is not. But if we accept that premise, no one's going to say no one is pro-healthcare. That doesn't make any sense. So if you accept or want to believe that abortion is healthcare, then you are pro-abortion because presumably you are pro-healthcare. You can't be one and not the other. Last but not least, we now have Michelle Williams, who, according to the media, made a passionate plea for abortion rights in a Golden Globes speech. What did she say exactly? She said, I've tried my very best to make a life of my own making. I wouldn't have been able to do this without employing a woman's right to choose, to choose when to have children and with whom. And for that, she was applauded. Reese Witherspoon responded and said, thank you for being a champion of women and you are an inspiration. And this is something fairly common that Hollywood likes to do. When they have acceptance speeches like this, they get up on the podium and they preach to us about all of the values that we should hold dear because they do for some reason. And so plenty of individuals in Hollywood are very pro-abortion. This is just one very small example here, but there are plenty. It should come as no shock to anybody that Planned Parenthood is also pro-abortion. For example, this tweet when they said that they need a Disney princess who's had an abortion and one who is pro-choice. Now, what that would serve, I don't really know. I also don't know how you'd just throw in abortion in a kid's movie, but there it is. And if you want to steer away from Hollywood celebrities and politicians, the best way to find individual real people who are pro-abortion is just to go to the Shout Your Abortion website. Here, you can find people telling their stories of why they got abortions and essentially doing so because they want to normalize abortion. They say that abortion is normal. The stories include things like, I did it out of love or the hours after were a giant ice cream and pizza party. That sure makes it sound like it was a very difficult decision. Or thank God for Planned Parenthood because they could get an abortion through a Planned Parenthood. Or last but not least, I wanted it, but wanting my baby wasn't enough. I was the only one that cared for my baby, the only one that loved my baby. I would like to point out here that three times she referenced the fetus as her baby. So it's a baby and she acknowledged that and yet she still went through an abortion because she was the only one that loved it. Now granted, these are just a few examples, but if you want more, feel free to go to the website and look at them. As a matter of fact, one of the times I referred someone who was pro-choice to this website, they said that it looked like it was a pro-life scam, that they were essentially just making up nonsense to try and hurt the pro-choice community. But that's not what's happening here. These are real people with real ridiculous stories. In my view, however, this article from late last year from the National Women's Law Center best epitomizes what is the pro-abortion position. And this is what they say. The media often paints abortion as a divisive political issue. But here's the truth. Abortion actually is an act of love, an act of compassion, an act of healing, and an act of selflessness. Those are direct quotes and images from that article, all of which are completely wrong. There are very few acts in this world that are less about love, compassion, healing, and selflessness than abortion. All of that is completely wrong. But as I said, I think that article is a really good article to go to because it epitomizes those who are in fact pro-abortion. Whether or not you call yourself pro-abortion, if you honestly believe all of those things about abortion, you are 100% pro-abortion. Now, as a really quick lightning round, let's just go through a bunch of other things. We have this t-shirt, abortion on demand and without apology, which you can buy for $20. Who in their right mind would do that? 
The t-shirt actually has pro-abortion as one of the tags, so at least they accept it. We also have signs like this. Free abortion on demand without apology. Abortion on demand and without apology. Abortion on demand and without apology. Anyone holding a sign like that is pro-abortion. I believe that slogan comes from this website, which is Stop Patriarchy, because they have articles and they reference abortion on demand and without apology, things that are dated several years ago. Now let's just look at a few articles really quick. We have this one where it says that abortion isn't a necessary evil, it's great. Where abortion is good for everyone because apparently that's science, where they say abortion is a wonderful thing. Or we have this one, free abortions on demand without apology, we kind of already talked about that. Or abortion is morally good. Now all of those articles, even though they are pro-abortion, they don't really admit it. It's not until we get to articles like this where they do admit that, where they say, I am pro-abortion, not just pro-choice, and here are 10 reasons why. Or this article right here saying that plenty of people are pro-abortion because apparently it's a necessary healthcare procedure that saves lives. Which is not accurate because healthcare is made to save lives and abortion, by definition, ends a human life every single time. A fetus is a human life, scientifically speaking, there is no argument about that. So all of these things show why the claim that no one is pro-abortion is complete nonsense. Very famous and well-respected individuals, whether in Hollywood or in Washington or in the media, they are pro-abortion. They may claim that they're not, but they're wrong. If you can think of any examples I have not yet covered, please let me know in the comment section below. I really want this video and the comments below to essentially be a place you can go to if you ever run into this really ridiculous argument. And to be honest, I actually have more respect for people who admit they are pro-abortion. They're at least willing to own up to it and they're brave enough to do so. On the other hand, if you claim to be pro-choice but don't think abortion is a necessary evil, or you think it's good for everyone, or you think it's morally good, or you want free abortion on demand and without apology, then you are pro-abortion. I hate to break it to you, but you are and you should just accept it. If you like this content, make sure you subscribe, hit the notification bell, but perhaps more importantly, share it. I'd really appreciate it if you could share this video with anyone you think might be interested or just anytime someone claims no one is pro-choice, just send them to this video. They're probably gonna leave some hate, but I'm okay with that. I can deal with it. As always, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.